next one up, uh, Howard Duan from the University of Queensland will be presenting, evaluating the impact of sustainable nitrogen management on carbon footprint. All right. Thank you. Yeah, um, so uh, today I'll be presenting on behalf of our UN team on the progress um, that we have done um, since the start of the project. And uh, um, so the team at UQ is led by Associate Professor Liu Ye, and unfortunately he, uh, she cannot be here, she's uh, on business trips. So I'll be presenting this on behalf of the whole team. Um, yeah, so the project that we at UQ works on is basically a sub-project of my part um, called Evaluating the Impact of Sustainable Nitrogen Management on Carbon Footprint. Um, so uh, our team at UQ have been working with um, most major Australian water utilities to study their greenhouse gas emissions, um, especially to facilitate their um, ambition to achieve net zero emissions. And net zero emission is really a thing now in Australia. Many utilities, especially those in Victoria, I think you all will be know very a lot about that. So by 2030, uh, utilities, especially in Victoria and other states, needs to achieve net zero. Um, so utilities are extremely interested in looking at te te technological options to help them to achieve such pathway. And so actually we were um, asked by our industry partner, um, Ben, Ben Bryan from Icon Water. So he heard about this project, this nice hub project, and uh, they really have a set target to reach net zero. So he asked us, um, well, if we have um, this urine separation in Canberra, will that help us to achieve net zero? And you know, we said, we don't know, it's uh, actually very, it's quite tricky. Like, what Stefano is going to do in, in Melbourne is if you take that nitrogen off, um, you have less nitrogen coming to the plants. And it's not necessarily a linear relationship. You have like 20% less nitrogen, you have 20% less nitrous oxide emission. It may not be that case. Um, so what we want to do is we want to firstly, we will um, try to establish a baseline for our industry partners, we will do full-scale monitoring of their greenhouse gas emissions, and here our focus is really uh, nitrous oxide emissions. And for, for, for those uh, that are, who, who are not that familiar with uh, wastewater treatment plants, uh, nitrous oxide represents majority of the scope point emissions and emitted from our virtual nitrogen removal process. And so we will try to firstly uh, establish a baseline and do full-scale monitoring at our industry partners' wastewater treatment plants. And then we'll try to understand um, scenarios if we take this urine off and how will that may impact the treatment plant's uh, carbon footprint. Uh, and lastly, this was actually um, inspired by a discussion that we had during last summit with Sean um, about this AOB, MOB story. So actually when I, when I did my PhD some years ago, my PhD was all about MOB inhibition. So we try to inhibit NOB to do uh, partial nitrization animals or nitration. And never thought the other way around. Maybe uh, there's actually an application that we need to encourage NOB growth. So the last part is really inspired by the, by the uh, discussion with Sean last time. And uh, after then, we try to uh, come up with our ideas if we can um, get a more stable partial nitrification process. Um, so start with the, uh, the, the, the big one, uh, so full-scale green, greenhouse gas monitoring project. So this is in collaboration with Melbourne Water and also an uh, industry partner of this night hub. Um, so we studied their uh, western treatment plants um, based in Werribee. Um, so in these western treatment plants, they have uh, anaerobic lagoon, which remove a majority of their carbon and recover that as energy, um, but still the nitrogen um, flows in after the anaerobic lagoon, and then uh, the plant we study basically here at the right hand <coughs> is a step feed full, full scale um, nitrogen removal plant. Um, it is four step, so the emission from those uh, this tank is actually very dynamic. So uh, we have set up a full scale M4 or greenhouse gas emission monitoring full scale setup. So um, in those four steps, step feed system, you can see um, it's tiny, you know, but in the red circle, <coughs> you can see in the middle of each aerobic zone, we have one uh, gas pool capturing the gas emissions 
and then the gas is sent to a, con a gas conditioning unit and then sent to an analyzer system um, analyzing the ga gas composition including uh, nitrous oxide, methane and carbon dioxide. Um, and in addition to that, we also have a liquid uh, M2O monitoring. So the, right, the, the bottom right hand side shows an, an M2O analyzer. So to, to understand the dissolved and full concentrations and to understand the generation. <coughs> um, yeah, so that's the full scale setup. Uh, only two slides, but behind this is a lot of efforts. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, next time I will present you some the monitoring results. We already have some, but I'll, I'll present that more comprehensively after um, comprehensive analysis. Um, so with this analysis, analysis we have, we still to understand if we take that nitrogen off, how this might impact the greenhouse gas emissions. And unfortunately, we don't have a reactor system like Stefano has already, but I see there's a good collaboration opportunity. We can help you with your study and then we can get some data from you. Um, so, without such data available <coughs> right now, what we can only do is what we can only do is currently want to do a carbon footprint analysis just anal uh, an analyzing different scenarios um, for current conventional uh, wastewater treatment process and the emerging um, wastewater treatment processes and some blue sky technologies. And we want, want to see how the urine separation and treatment technologies, how that may couple with the wastewater treatment plant processes in terms of um, its impact on uh, the scope one greenhouse gas emissions as well as scope two greenhouse gas emissions. So the scenarios we uh, we considered here include um, the NPR urine treatment te uh, technology as well as electrochemical treatment technology. And for the conventional process, we considered MLE process, which is mostly used. And for immersion one, we considered a high rate activity smart and partial nitrogen animals process. And the blue sky technology we consider anaerobic MDR with um, ammonia of, uh, absorption, uh, absorption by zeolites, and this actually this blue sky technology was the winner of uh, Melbourne Waters um, net zero competition, and um, so they really want, want this to be included. Um, and so this is still sort of ongoing. We are we are trying to model um, if we have uh, less urine in um, with water plant plant, how does that impact uh, scope one emission? Um, but overall, we can see, uh, uh, obviously, when you take urine off, you will generate less uh, scope one emissions because basically you have less nitrogen loading. Um, but on, on the other hand, um, from literature, it shows um, MBR, etc., still produce um, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so how to weigh that? Um, there is also some balancing point to, to, to meet. Um, so I'm not going to present to you in details of these uh, greenhouse gas emissions. I'll present this in CEC conference in more details. Um, yeah, welcome to the to the pre presentations. Um, and lastly, is this um, a new process uh, we want to talk about that we're trying to um, study at UQ? So um, as Sean was was just talking about the AOB NOB uh, growth in MDR, um, you. It may subject to um, process failure, mainly due to inhibition to uh, nit nitrile oxidizing bacteria. Uh, this is due to the pH change and the formation of free nitrous acid or free ammonia, which affected MOB activity and which in return promote the accumulation of nitrile and free nitrous acid, inhibiting MOB. And we've, we've seen quite a lot of studies trying to avoid inhibition on MLB by regulating environmental factors. Um, so that basically shows uh, the nitrification pathway ammonia by MLB to nitrite and then by MLB oxidized to nitrate. So what we come up with the idea is um, instead of regulating environmental factors to pre prevent inhibition, can we try to encourage the growth of MLB within the system? Um, yeah, so we, w we want to use a very recent uh, um, partial denitrification process. Um, so what we, we mean by this using this partial denitrification process is normally we have ammonia oxidized to nitrite and then nitrate, and we want to de denitrify part of the nitrate back to nitrite by heterotrophic bacteria, 
and then we hope that denitrification stop at nitrite. So in this case, we will have these nitrites produced not only by ALB, but also by heterotrophic bacteria. So we have more supply of nitrite. So that gives more substrate for ALB to grow, to grow within the system. So we hope that we can get this loop of nitrite, nitrite production within a urine treatment so that we can encourage the growth of ALB. And so how do we plan to achieve such partial denitrification in urine, urine treatment? Um, so we based on three hypotheses. Um, firstly, um, studies reported a high pH condition would actually favor the accumulation of nitrite in the denitrification process. This has been tested in previous studies. And uh, urine actually contains high pH, so we, uh, we, we want to operate a, a urine treatment reactor under relatively high pH condition, actually pH 8, um, to, for the, for, um, uh, to favor the nit nit partial denitrification. But yeah, as you may want to ask or question or challenge us, if you have high pH and under urine condition, you will have free ammonia. That causes inhibition again. And so that's another, um, that's why we chose to use MABR process. So MABR process, um, the illustration in the middle, um, basically is a counter diffusion biofilm system where you supply oxygen from the inner um, lumen and the substrate, say ammonium, etc., are from the bulk liquid. So it's counter diffusion. So oxygen from the, uh, actually are from the inside. And the benefits of this is you have ammonia oxidizing bacteria in the inner part, and the substrate comes to from the outer, uh, the, the outer layer. And AOB, when it does its work, it, can, it produces proton. So studies in MABR already show in the right-hand side, even when the pH at outside the bulk liquid is high, due to this proton pr production by AOB, the pH the, in the inner side is, is way lower than the bulk liquid. Like the right hand side uh, um, illustration shows, it can be 1 to 1.5 uh, difference of pH. So we hope in this design, even if we have high pH at the outer layer, which promote the partial denitrification by heterotroph in the, uh, in the outer layer, and within the membrane itself, the pH inside is relatively low uh, or neutral, um, about 7, so it will not uh, induce too much FMA or FA inhibition. And so we have set up a reactor um, to, to test this, um, but yeah, growing biofilms etc. still needs time. And hopefully next time we can talk about this um, lab result as well. And so in addition to the research progress, we also have some progress in education. We hosted the visit of a so associate professor Jiang Wen from Harbin Institute of Technology, and also a PhD student, um, Meng Qi, uh, from Harbin Institute of Technology. So actually, um, associate professor Jia Meng is uh, the one who did the uh, environmental analysis, and Ms. Uh, uh, Meng Qifu is a PhD student who is doing the MABR study, experimental study. And we also have recently recruited a PhD student uh, to come in this in October. And uh, yeah, that's all from us, and I want to acknowledge our industry partners, especially our PI, Dr. Peter Wardrop and Claire, as well as James Lewis, Peter, and Demuk Dijon from Elmo Water, and Benjamin Bryan from Micro Water, um, and of course the funding support of ARC and Thank you.